we head over to our Seattle Kraken, who uh, have been busy up until we started recording. So we'll get into uh, the scores here. Um, March 16th versus the Tampa Bay Lightning, the back-to-back champions. Uh, losing that game 1-4. to four. Player of the game would be forward Yanni Gord with a goal, a point, four shots on goal, a block, and one takeaway in the game against his former team. And then March 19th versus the Detroit Red, Wing, Red Wings, uh, winning that game 4-2. to two. Player of the game, again, Yanni Gord, this time with two goals, two points, a one plus minus, and two shots on goal. Now, these games were very interesting. One, because the crowd was great for both those games. They were electric. Yeah. I know after the Yanni Gord goal, so Seattle scored first in that Tampa Bay game, and that place lit up. That was probably one of that goal was one of the louder ones I've heard all year. Um, and then you get drubbed. He lit up four unanswered. <laughs> ah. Tampa Bay is another. They're. I don't know if they're a favorite, but they're going to contend for the title again this year after winning it the last two years. So, you know, it's they're setting the standard right now. Yeah. So it's I'm okay with losing that game. Uh, Detroit, you come into that game in the first period, you're dominating shots. Uh, they didn't get a shot on goal until like eight minutes left in the period. You know, that's 12 minutes without getting a shot on goal. Uh, Seattle was peppering and peppering, peppering. So you think, hey, and Detroit was making a bunch of great saves. You think, hey, one of these is going to go in. Just keep pushing. We head into the second period. Detroit says, we're going to flip the switch on you. They get two goals in a matter of a few minutes. You say, uh, how did we get here? You know, this is the most Seattle Kraken thing that's happened. <laughs> you know, this is the most Kraken period we've seen all year <laughs> where you, you're dominating in the game mm-hmm. in the period before. And now, ah, poop. There are two, but yeah. Head into the third period at around the uh, 12 minute left mark. Uh, goaltender Philip Grubauer makes a sprawling save to, you know, keep Detroit out of the goal, making that would have made it three nothing, right? Makes it an even more surmountable, uh, insurmountable lead. And so Seattle comes in and scores four unanswered goals. You know, uh, yeah, the interesting thing about Yanni Gord is that he got hit in the face with the puck in that period. He got hit in the face um, and he had to go out for it, got it stitched up, came right back out. Scored two goals, including the one to take the lead and the empty netter. So um, he had a a good week. Good. Um, But it's interesting, you know, before we get into all the trades with this team, I think there's a few players that I I would want to make sure that are on the team next year. Um, Because as we're going to get into it, a lot of moving pieces. Um, I would like to keep Philip Grubauer. Uh, I know that I'd like to keep both goaltenders. I know they've both had a tough year and, uh, because their defenders haven't, you know, given them any favors. Uh, so just going to move past that. But Yanni Gord, I would love to keep on the team. He's a guy that every every game, his energy is great. He's always flying around. And it's always funny. His fights afterwards, like 99% of the time, he's got a big grin on his face after he's gotten in a fight. Uh, I would. That's a guy I would like to keep on the roster and maybe give him the captaincy next year, you know, since – I don't think it's any secret your captain was traded. Yeah. Um, Jared McCann signed a five-year deal. He's been probably your best player. Obviously, keep him. Jaden Schwartz. Uh, shoot, I have to look over to my notes now to see who's still on the roster here because we lost so many people. Um, Jordan Eberle was an all-star this year. Uh, sure, I'm okay with that. Morgan Geeky is a younger guy. I'd like to keep him as well. Um, outside of that, a lot of the other guys on on the, on the skater line are – kind of disposable the defenseman Hayden Fleury a guy who's a younger defenseman is finally going to get some time with a lot of the his defenseman counterparts being traded so I, I think it's important we look at this before we get to the trades right I talked to you about this before we started I think um, there were expectations that Seattle was going to see immediate success because of what Vegas did yep. that was never going to be the case you know, the league saw what Vegas was able to do, you know, making trades on the side, you know, leveraging themselves into getting better deals. So we're not going to let that happen again. They had years to prepare for because they knew that Seattle was going to get a team in 2018. It was announced mm-hmm. officially. So they said, okay, there's going to be another draft. We have to get ready for that. And so they were able to prepare for that properly. Um, you know, you're able to sign some guys in free agency like Grubauer. Um but you, you were kind of had the deck stacked against you in the draft. You know, granted, there were concerns that you could have drafted better players in the draft, but uh, we'll say that for later. Um, just the idea that you were going to replicate anybody comparing it to Vegas, I think, is there. There, not to throw shade, 
But there, he, he's not a sports anchor, but there's an anchor on one of the news stations around here that said, oh, it's disappointing that they weren't able to see immediate success. No. No. Tell me, how many expansion teams have you seen that see immediate success? No, yeah, that's a false expectation. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought that was a little little silly. Yeah, I just, definitely. It's like, Some shade thrown. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. That That's why we're here, though. Part of the reason why is to let you know what's going on and to let you know that some of these things that – maybe more casual fans don't understand that's kind of why we're here you know to let you know you know that hey this expectation to come out and i know that there was hope for a playoff the spot this year but it was like a fringe thing yeah idea that you were going to be a, a winning team this year probably not right and what has been done with these trades i think is what you should do with an expansion team is to to go young you know so with that being said let's finally get to the elephants multiple in the room uh, with these trades at least for before we'll do that we'll hit a quick injury news stop on the 21st the team activated forward Jonas Donskoy off of injured reserve uh, which they needed to do because as we get to it here uh, on the 16th the team traded the made their first trade uh, prior to the deadline trading forward Kelly Yarncroak to the Calgary Flames uh, the Flames received Yarncroak uh, Seattle received a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 third round pick uh, as well as a 2024 seventh round pick. Uh, this season with Seattle, Yarn Crook had 12 goals, five assists, and 27 points. Uh, we'll take a quick detour for a prospect check in to check in on the young fellows. Uh, Riker Evans, uh, down with the Regina Pats in the WHL, recorded his 100th career assist. Uh, Evans this season playing in 56 games, recording 13 goals, 41 assists for 40, 54 points and two game winning goals. And then over to the prize jewel of the uh, Kraken younger players, Maddie Beneers, earning all Big Ten tournament honors as Michigan won the Big Ten tournament. Uh, Beneers scoring four points, uh, two goals, and two assists, and 33 games played this year. Uh, Beneers has 19 goals, 21 assists, four points, and four game winning goals as Michigan uh, is currently the number one seed in the NCAA men's ice hockey tournament. Um, we head over to the big trade that I think we talked about it had been kind of speculated, just depends on where he was going to go. Uh, Seattle Kraken captain Mark Giordano was traded to his hometown Toronto Maple Leafs in addition to Ford Colin Blackwell. Colin Blackwell was a surprise addition to me. Uh, I knew that Giordano was going to be traded. He had made it known to the front office that he wanted to go and chase the Stanley Cup as his age you know, increased. Um, Blackwell being added was something that was surprising to me. Blackwell was an energetic forward that, you know, was always scrappy each game, uh, referred to by the Twitter Kraken admins as a short king. Um, so the Maple Leafs received uh, Giordano and Colin Blackwell. Giordano uh, will play for his hometown team, as I mentioned, recorded uh, six goals, 17 assists, and 23 points through 55 games played this season. Blackwell this season, 39 games played, eight goals, nine assists, 17 points, and one game winner. The Kraken received uh, a 2022 second-round pick a 2023 second round pick and a 2024 third round pick. I know that was a little bit uh, concerning to not get a first rounder. There was expectation that Seattle uh, would be able to pull that off. Not able to do so, as you see there. Um, I can't really take a stop to look at any of these necessarily because there were so many of them. <laughs> um, the team would trade defenseman Jeremy Lausanne to the Nashville Predators. Uh, the Predators received Lausanne. Uh, and the Kraken received a second round pick in 2023. Uh, the team traded forward Mason Appleton back to the team that uh, he was selected from in the expansion draft, the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets received Mason Appleton and the Kraken received the 2023 fourth round pick from the Jets. And then today, <coughs> excuse me, on the 21st, the team traded forward Marcus Johansson to his former team, the Washington Capitals. The Capitals received forward Marcus Johansson. And the Kraken received for it Daniel Sprong, a 2022 fourth round pick and a 2023 sixth round pick. Also on the 21st, uh, the team recalled the forward Cole Lynn from the Charlotte Checkers. And the team picked up uh, defenseman Derek Poliot, Poliot uh, up from uh, off from waivers from the Vegas Knights. Uh, Poliot is a defenseman that is 28 years old. Uh, he's on his fifth team. In the league currently uh and has only played in four nhl games since 2019 so with that big <laughs> whirlwind uh 
what's your initial reaction to of all of that going on? You know, a lot to digest. I, I imagined that the team would make a two or three trades. I didn't think they'd go out and get rid of a bunch of guys. Now, granted, a lot of these guys were going to be undra- unrestricted free agents at the end of the year, so you're getting okay. value out of them for teams that teams like Washington, teams like Nashville, teams like Toronto teams like Calgary that want to gear up for the playoffs and make sure that they've got what they need in order to try and take the whole thing home. Um, but I'm, I was surprised by some of this. What did, uh, you know, as, well, as like a co-host, said, what did you think about seeing all of this? Yeah. If they were going to be unrestricted free agents anyway, then like you said, why not get something in return? Um, I'm surprised by how many of them were 23, 2023 round picks. Yeah. So, um, with that being said, I think that's a good good thing to mention because so the way it stands right now, and I, I think I told you this, um, the way things stand right now, Seattle has more draft picks than players under contract right now. Uh, so 12 picks upcoming in this year's draft, uh, 13 in the 2023 draft, and 9 in the 2024 draft. So before you get concerned about <laughs> having that many picks. Uh, Ron Francis was on hand today uh, to speak to the media. Uh, and we'll just we'll look a little bit at what he was saying. Um, talked about accommodating some of those player requests to be traded. Said that four of the six guys that were moved went to places that were probably their first choice. Mm-hmm. So that's good to hear, right? You don't, yeah. with the Seahawks and how they've handled some situations, you want to hear guys that have positive reflections on the organization, right? Um, said that about the draft picks and how many that you've got hopes uh hopes to use some of those as currency in a trade pieces so that's good you know you'd hope to not use all 25 picks over the next yeah, two years yeah, yeah. uh gives you some draft capital or you can go in into the summer right and say hey we're here to trade right um uh, if, if if you if you're another team and you want to go younger and you want to move a guy hey seattle's got picks right so there was that uh the plan to be competitive is still on the table uh, Francis said, we have the cap space, we have the money, we still plan on being active in free agency. If we can be, we want to be every bit as competitive as any other team in the league. So that expectation is still there. How much of that will be reality is, I mean, we still have to see. Um, How much time do they have left before the free agency is over? Huh? How much time do they have Oh, free left? agency hasn't yeah. started. Oh. The draft, so the trade deadline these... happened. Oh, okay. Trade okay. deadline, yeah. That took, that ended uh, at, at noon our time. Got it. Um, there are, it's, it's weird. Like the NFL draft, I mean, the NFL trade deadline where some mm-hmm. like get announced after. Yeah. Uh, I think we might hear something about that, but as of the moment, we don't have anything. Uh, about Giordano, I know that some people were interested about that. I guess Giordano came up to Francis and said, you know, Francis, how do you want to, what kind of approach do you want to take to this? He said, I'm not tying your hands. You can trade me anywhere you want. Legally, he had to give him 10 t- trades because he's got a no trade clause. Um, and I guess all of them were teams that weren't in the playoffs. And so Ron Francis was able to accommodate that, send him to his hometown team, a team that's going to chase a Stanley Cup this season. Uh, so that was kind of nice to see. Uh, Lausanne, see, Lausanne, I don't know how much hockey you follow. Um, Lausanne's a guy who gets in a lot of fights, um, which is nice to have an enforcer, right? But uh, didn't really make up for it. In his in his uh, talent end, <laughs> so to see them get a, a second round pick was surprising. Um, it, it's funny because Francis said I wasn't really looking to trade him, but teams were offering a second round pick, and they thought that was more than a fair value. So they said, wow. "Oh, you want him? Here you go." You know, <laughs> not turning a second rounder. Yeah, uh, viewed as comparable deals. Um, well, then it sounds like they'll have a busy off season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that they Francis had said that they were hoping to be aggressive in free agency. So, well, I uh, obviously, oh, the way I look at it though is be smart if you're going to be aggressive. Don't overpay for a guy and get into a bidding yeah. war if it's unnecessary, you know. Um, Does this look like rebuild to you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's the first year, so I can't necessarily say rebuild. I think yeah. you're um, stocking up. Trying things out still. Because I think the plan is to be young, right? Yeah. Uh, but here, it's perfect. You said that right as I read this quote. We didn't do all this to draft and develop and be good five years from now. We did this to give us the tools to try and be better next season. So it's interesting. I think you hit on it. They want to be busy this offseason, which yeah. I'm sure they will. 
Um, he said they could have looked at making more deals, but then it really depletes you even more. Uh, huh? It's geez, <laughs> they need yeah. To have a roster. <laughs> I guess they were look. They weren't looking at trading Blackwell, but they were probably going to do it if they couldn't get him an extension. Um, so that's nice to look at. But yeah, so it's it was a busy busy season. I know that the way I looked at it before Johansson was traded, you had you know four offensive lines still available. Um, and three three defensive lines. Um, now you're back to four because you acquired Sprong in that trade and you added Pouliot uh, to make it seven defensemen. So you've technically got a roster that's available, but you're very, very, very thin on depth. Yeah. So that's why I imagine you see some of your prospects maybe getting some ice time with you here soon. But uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty wild, pretty wild uh, time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we look at it with NFL free agency happening and some weird version of MLB free agency as well as the NHL trade deadline all taking place in these last few weeks. And that's why we've been so busy, you know? So we look at the crack in record here, uh, going 19, 38 and six, 19 wins, 38 losses and six overtime losses resulting in 44 points, still sitting at eighth in the Pacific division. And I highly doubt that's going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, the crack and sit, well, I already said that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, Looking ahead. Their upcoming games, there's three road games, two of them in L.A., the first being March 22nd at the Arizona Coyotes with a 7 o'clock start, March 26th at the L.A. Kings with a 7.30 start, and March 28th at the L.A. Kings with a 7.30 start. So trip down to L.A. after a little quick stop in Arizona. Uh, and it's interesting we talk about the division standing. Before, and I don't know where they sit at it right now because I haven't looked, but before the team actually beat Detroit, uh, they were the lowest, they were the last team, and they were at the bottom of the NHL standings, the total league standings. So, um, you know, you look at the draft, you're you're going to guarantee yourself a high pick with whatever you've got. So uh, building young, they will be somewhat building young. Um, Is it usual for them to do double headers with the same team like that? Not, well, not necessarily. I think uh, this might have factored in with some of the games that got rescheduled. Uh, makes um, sense. Because at the end of this month, in the beginning of April, they have a sort of doubleheader against Vegas where they play Vegas on the 30th of the month this month and then the 1st of April. So uh, it, it might have been just a scheduling thing that got thrown in there. 